Welcome to Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizullah. Thank you for joining us today. Today I have Dr. Allison Conlin, a medical oncologist at Providence Cancer Center in Portland. Wonderful to have you. Thanks for having me. Well, I wanted to have a discussion on bone health and bisphosphonates from the San Antonio Breast Cancer Symposium. I know that a trial was presented that looked at duloxetine for preventing aromatase inhibitor-related side effects. Can you tell us some of the clinically important aspects of that study? Yeah, so this study looked particularly at a, a toxicity patients get aromatase inhibitor musculoskeletal symptoms and was looking at improving that in women. Of course, this is a major problem. Up to 50% of women uh, taking adjuvant aromatase inhibitors can have this side effect, and it can lead to early discontinuation, which of course we don't want to happen. So this trial looked at using an SNRI, a duloxetine, as a treatment. It was based on a smaller study that had shown efficacy. In this trial, it was SWOG 1202, it was randomizing to placebo or duloxetine. They started with a lower dose and went up to the effective dose, 60 milligrams for 12 weeks, and looked, of course, in the patients on both placebo and on drug at several different quality measures, several different scores that have been validated, looking specifically at joint symptoms, quality of life, depression, and saw an improvement, in fact, in both groups, even the placebo group, but much more significant in the patients receiving the duloxetine. Excellent. Now, there was a study looking at abandronate. Mm -hmm. Can you describe some of those results? Yeah, this was a Dutch trial looking at abandronate, an oral bisphosphonate that was given daily in this study to over a thousand women. It was a large study looking at early stage patients, stage one to three, who were postmenopausal and had estrogen positive cancers that were cured. The goal of the study wasn't just looking at bone health, which of course we know bisphos bisphosphonates are very successful at improving bone health in women, but it was looking indeed at disease for survival and bone outcomes um, trying to prevent recurrence. This has been looked at in many bisphosphonates over the last several years, if not decade. Um, and this trial, unfortunately, did not have a statistically significant benefit. Mm -hmm. However, there was a trend in the hazard ratio, and perhaps the conclusions are that maybe more follow-up is needed. This was a relatively short follow-up, four years median. Yes. Well, hopefully more to, come more to come on that front. And how about reviewing data on bisphosphonates in breast cancer, both as a bone health maintenance therapy and a potential therapeutic option? Yeah. I think it's pretty clear that bisphosphonates are very helpful for our patients when it comes to their bone health. We worry very much about that in our premenopausal women who become menopausal early, either from chemotherapy or from ovarian suppression. We worry about it particularly as our postmenopausal patients get older and take estrogen deprivating therapy. So I think many trials have shown bisphosphonates and uh, rank ligand inhibitors like denosumab are helpful in slowing down that process, where really the question has become more controversial but also relevant is does it affect outcomes in terms of disease for survival and reduction in metastases to bones? A recent um, meta-analysis, the early breast cancer trialist meta-analysis meta in 2015 tried to put together 26 trials looking at this and found a small disease-free survival benefit that was significant. So there is a suggestion in postmenopausal women, whether naturally or made postmenopausal by their treatment, that there is a benefit to these drugs. I think we're still all waiting for the sort of final incorporation into our um, therapeutic algorithm. Yes. So I think there is more to come there, but the more we look at it, the more we see benefit, although some studies we're still waiting. Absolutely, more information to come forward. Any other novel treatments available on the horizon in this area? Yeah, well, I think I mentioned the denosumab or the red yes. inhibitor. I think we're still looking at some trials in that as well. Um, certainly bone health and prevention of bone metastases are huge topics in breast cancer, particularly the estrogen positive breast cancer group. So we're excited to see more work to be done on this and we're excited to see what else comes out. And just as an overall perspective, can you tell us your approach to maintaining bone health in this patient population? Yeah, I think that um, we're, we are happy to have ASCO and others um, help us with guidelines in this area. I think that um, checking bone densities in patients who were putting on agents that are particularly going to deplete their bone mineral density is important. So a baseline bone density scan. Um, we follow guidelines similar to postmenopausal women in looking at five years at least, or in two years if needed. Bone health 
is important and um, bone density changes slowly over time, but we want to catch it before it becomes a problem. What maintenance therapies are you typically using in your clinical practice? In my clinical practice, I use a lot of just weekly alendronate, Fosamax for patients who have um, either osteoporosis or osteopenia. We do use Prolia injection um, every six months for many patients. It's attractive. Sometimes yearly reclassed is the most uh, relevant option for a patient who has trouble with oral agents. But yeah, we, we follow the guidance of our endocrinologists, but realize that paying attention to bone health in breast cancer patients is very important. Absolutely. You said it right. Now, Dr. Conlon, it's such a pleasure to have you today on Practice Update, and we hope to see you soon. Thanks. Great. Absolutely. To our viewers, thank you very much for joining us for this Practice Update. I'm Dr. Farzana Hafizullah.